The second part of section 7.2 deals with salads of known cross sections. So far in 7.2, we've dealt with um, the disc method and also the washer method, which was really a disc method. Um, but when we were dealing with the disc method, we were dealing with a circular cross section where we knew that the area was equal to pi r squared. Now, we can use this same technique um, when we have something that's not necessarily a circle. Um, if we have a common cross section such as a square or rectangle or triangle or something along those lines where we know the area, we can also then go and find the volume. To do this, um, it, we still have to keep in mind whether or not we are our cross sections are being taken perpendicular to the x-axis or the y-axis. If it's perpendicular to the x-axis, then we're going to have to integrate with respect to x as in equation number one here, and picture number one. If our cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis as they are for this here, then we're going to have to look at equation two and we're going to have to integrate with respect to y. Now let's look at examples, uh, or the next example, and this one is actually going to deal with a triangular cross section. It says to find the volume of the solid that's shown in figure 7.25, um, and it says that the base of the salad is a region bounded by the lines f of x equals 1 minus x divided by 2, g of x equals a negative 1 plus x divided by 2, and this is hidden, but we also have to um, take into account um, x equals 0 as well. Now what you'll see is when we graph this in a 3D um, image, we see that we end up with some cross-section that's in a triangular shape and that triangular shape is perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, now if we kind of did a section view of this, what you'll see is this is our g of x equation, this is our f of x equation, and then this is where x is equal to zero. So you'll see that we end up then with an equilateral triangle. Because we're dealing with an equilateral triangle, hopefully from geometry, you recall that the area of an equilateral triangle is equal to the square root of 3 divided by 4 times s squared. And s here is just um, one of your side lengths. So we'll say length of side s. Now in this case, your length is going to be equal to one of these sides here. Now, we need to calculate the base length. The base, which would be like this part of your rect or triangle right there, is going to equal one function minus the other function. And in this case, it went f minus g. When you subtract those two, you get 2 minus x for the length of your base. Okay, so that's going to equal the side length of our equilateral triangle. And remember, in equilateral triangles, all side lengths are the same. So then when I go and I calculate my area, I'm going to go th the square root of 3 divided by 4 times that base squared, which we just calculated our base to be 2 minus x, and we're going to square that whole quantity. And since we have this image here, if you look, our x values are going from 0 to 2, so when we integrate, our volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 2 of our area, which we just calculated to be the square root of 3 divided by 4, times the quantity of the base length, which was 2 minus x, and we're going to square that, dx. And when we integrate all of that from 0 to 2, we see that we end up with 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 3, um, as your final volume.